and, and for a coach going into a new environment was that very much sort of the the process get the uh, operation team the, the the tactical coaches on board first and then you can really do what you need to do once you show yeah. those results and 100 percent. you can't one of the one of the things when other coaches would come over to china one of the things i would caution them about i'd say hey we're about to put you with you know men's junior badminton you're about to walk into their weight room and, and the first thing you're going to do is observe their weight training session as it is you're about to like write a million notes about how horrendous it is and how many terrible things they're doing you need to pump the brakes like mm -hmm. you need to be asking yourself what of these things what 70 percent could i keep and and just add a little bit a little bit of something and and you know the way you guys do that I, I like that exercise let me just tweak it a little bit so that you guys don't look so horrible i could never post a video of it all right yeah. so so i'll just just make these little tweaks once you got buying from the coaches and everything and you got to do what you what exactly what you wanted to do and it was 100 percent your program did it take a while for the athletes to actually let go of the seriousness of everything and, and appreciate having fun or this is a great sort of just come actually it's a great question and actually the chinese the athletes are the easiest they are all little kids i mean they are i can say this because none of them will listen to this podcast but they're all in this kind of arrested development a little bit you know they've been in chinese sports schools since they were very small and they you know have a very sheltered life and they're it's the type of deprived from play yeah like <laughs> all of my 20 year old yeah. You know, gold medalists travel with teddy bears, like multiple mm. teddy bears, right? Mm. And candy and sweets. Like if you looked into their backpack, you would think that they were eight-year-olds. And, yeah. you know, yeah, and they're, they're used to, you know, coaches have to take away their phones at night, you know, in hotel rooms. Like it's, so they, if I'm, if I'm proposing something fun, they're the, they are the easiest sell. Things When you're starting to adopt this style, what are some common mistakes that you've noticed or perhaps you made early in your career? Um, you know, in terms of integrating this philosophy into your strength and conditioning? Yeah, um, you know, you have to, as I kind of alluded before, you have to earn the right to be able to do this. You know, you have to, you know, you, fortunately, like I said, like now everyone knows what to expect and it's you know, lucky that my Chinese team was so successful that now I, not many people push back. But for a new coach, you, you, I mean, you have to understand why you're doing, you have to, if you're going to have a, you know, a hacky sack. If you're going to be doing a hacky sacking, like group hacky sack competition, you've got to mention the word that this is helping hip mobility, that this looks silly and fun. But the mm. fact that I'm not letting you, that I've just, after round one, I no longer let you hit it off of your shoelaces. You have to do, you know, external and internal rotation to hit. Well, that's because I've tweaked this, you know, I've put another constraint on this game so that it hits the internal and external rotation of your hip. Last question, because you've answered, um, there in terms of where, where you get your ideas from how you lean on pe teachers and physical education teachers um, yeah and jack and, I, and I should say also i'm sorry to cut you off but i'd be yeah. remiss if i didn't say i get most of my ideas by watching practice because i'm just sitting there watching the head coach i'm like oh look at that drill okay so in that drill the girls have to you know like oh the girls have to let's say get get deep on defense or something like that all right and the coach is yelling at them about their butts being too high on defense and, I, and i'm like brain turning okay tomorrow in warm-up what can i do all right i make everybody touch the floor i'm gonna i'm gonna make i'm gonna make some of warm-up look like volleyball practice i'm gonna do this exact same drill except i'm gonna tweak it and i think make it even better i'm gonna put weight vests on everybody and i'm gonna have everybody have to touch the floor before they dig the ball and then touch the floor after that will be the constraint of the game and and my hope is that the next day like i am just mimicking i'm parroting everything that the head coach was saying the day before I'm and what about when you're working with male individuals or male teams uh, compared to female is there a difference for fun and engagement can you use the same games is it different coaching cues talk us through your process there real this is this is tricky because i would say you know from like from a youth and like standpoint, definitely big differences, you know, when you're training young, you know, there's, there's the boys being a little bit more aggressive when they're younger, you know, when puberty hits and they're like peacocking constantly and they want to show off and the women sometimes being more reticent in the puberty ages, but the girls being badasses when they're younger, um, at the elite levels, uh, they're both hyper competitive. So, uh, I would say that, at the non-elite levels and the younger levels that, that the boys tend to be, in my experience, tend to be more competitive and like, you know, don't mind, you know, they hate losing, but like, don't mind 
something where somebody's going to lose. Whereas sometimes I've made the mistake of of creating too many competitions 